Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, B. New. I'm coming at you on this Monday morning. Uh, first and foremost, man, blessings, positive vibrations out to everybody. Uh, just had a great weekend uh, this past weekend. You know, um, the Lakers did have two games over the weekend that, that I want to discuss. And I would have came with y'all sooner. But, of course, you know, I was at the Titans game on yesterday to see the Titans pull off uh, yet another victory, man. Had a real good time with one of my partners who uh, from Louisiana, you know, and I hate to have to just do that to them, but you know, it is what it is. But anyway, moving right along, as we know, the Los Angeles Lakers had two games over the weekend, one of which did not look so good. Of course, that was against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now in the first half, the Lakers decided to show up you understand what I'm saying? In the first half, the Lakers actually decided to show up and play basketball, and it looked as though they were going to take control of the game and win. But as we all know, the Lakers have struggled mightily in the third quarter in a lot of games this year for whatever reason, uh, and they come out of the gate slow. And the Lakers keep saying that they blame themselves. All oh, the only people that can beat us is ourselves. You know, you heard Anthony Davis say this after the loss. You heard uh, Dwight Howard say, uh, you know, we just can't, we need to be humble. So in other words, you can't just be like, oh man, we better than these young cats and we're going to go out here and win when that's not necessarily the case because nobody out here is just giving away victory. So the Lakers cannot have that mind state. And I don't know what it was, but in the third quarter, it was like the lead got put on the basket. And I won't even say it was good defense by the Minnesota Timberwolves. It was more so the Lakers were missing a lot of open shots. They were passing the ball efficiently. Uh, they didn't have many assists, but that was because they just simply were not hitting the shots. Uh, the ball never really stopped. It's just that the Lakers were very cold. And I think when they got down by so much that they just resorted to shooting threes and that's not what's going to help you come back and win a game, especially when you get down. When you get down, what's going to make you come back and win games is uh, defense. You know, you got to go out and play defense on the other side and get stops and know that the offense is going to come to you as long as you keep continuing to play through your strengths on the offensive end of the ball, i.e. Anthony Davis. Speaking of which, uh, Anthony Davis, who actually went out and had a great performance on yesterday. Now, I was at the Titans game on yesterday, so I didn't really have a chance to uh, watch all of the games. So what I did was, you know, record it and later on watch it. And, you know, from basically what I saw, it looked like Anthony Davis just took over in the first quarter. Uh, man, had like, what, 18, 19 points in the first quarter. Came out and was very dominant. And I think a lot of that was because uh, the Lakers decided to start him at center this game and actually insert Carmelo into the starting forward, uh, the starting power forward position. And lo and behold, who do you have back on yesterday who had a hell of a performance, I would say, is none or none other than THT. You know, and with THT, uh, with THT coming back to the lineup, that's somebody who can give you ball handling skills. That's somebody who can give you... Uh, defense on the other end who can go out and get that assignment of uh, pressure the ball on the other end and also uh, getting easy shots uh, by cutting to the basket and the Lakers I think showed resiliency on yesterday uh, because you know of course the Spurs start cutting into that lead and of course I started to get worried even though I didn't look up the score even though I had recorded and I saw it later I didn't know what the final score was so you know they cut into that lead down to two you know, in the waning minutes of the game. But, of course, the Lakers out of the timeout come back and go on the 7-0 run just to put the, games out, to put the game out of reach uh, for the San Antonio Spurs. And, you know, that was a good quality win. I think any win that you get in the NBA is a quality win in most cases, uh, you know, except for some of the teams like OKC. But you saw what OKC has done to the Lakers twice, you know. But I think that lineup with uh, Anthony Davis, Melo, THT, uh, Avery Bradley in Westbrook was a nice lineup because you have Avery Bradley who can shoot three. You can have THT who can shoot three. You got Melo who can shoot three. And AD was actually knocking down threes on yesterday too. And Westbrook actually hit three threes yesterday too, which, uh, you know, if he can get better at the three-point strike, which we know that's not who he is, but if you get in the gym and you consistently work on it, if he can just get up to a respectable 32 or 33%, I can live with that from Russ. 
I can definitely live with that from Russ. Uh, but 28% is not going to cut it. But I'm sure that raised his percentage uh, yesterday to a, res a more respectful percentage. But anyway, Anthony Davis, of course, was the star of the game because everything went through him. And him having 34 points, 15 rebounds, and even more notably, six assists. Because the six assists was the San Antonio Spurs making adjustments to what the Lakers was doing in the first half. So, of course, the San Antonio Spurs came out and tried to run zone, you know, and do some things to shut Anthony Davis down. Uh, double team from the weak side. They was bringing a lot of double teams uh, more often than they were in the first half to kind of slow down Anthony Davis. But, of course, Anthony Davis was making great looks uh, to the inside of people that were cutting, you know, to the rim. He had the great look to Westbrook on the cut in the key moment. Uh, you know, he was kicking it out to open shooters. Uh, speaking of open shooters, another one was Wayne Ellington. Wayne Ellington, of course, uh, I want to say he was five out of eight from three. So, Wayne Ellington, I'm telling y'all, he Wayne Ellington is a sharpshooter. If you don't know, like Snoop used to say, you better ask somebody. Because Wayne Ellington is a sharp shooter. So now that you have, and you know, I did notice that Baysmore didn't get any playing time. And that's just, you know, that's just part of being the Lakers having the depth that they do. And you're going to find the rotations eventually. But the way Malik Monk has been playing on the offensive end and because of the Lakers going to these scoring drops sometimes, especially since LeBron James hasn't been playing, then it's very important uh, that you have somebody in who can play offense, you know. And when they started the game with Bradley uh, and THT, that's two people that's more than capable of playing high performance on the defensive end and also more than capable of giving you points. And the Lakers spread everybody around, had seven, six or seven players in double digits again on, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, even though Avery Bradley was part of the starting lineup, he came away with no points, but he didn't take a whole lot of shots. Uh, his main thing is playing defense, and it was good that he brought that to the table. But I think it'll be very interesting to see in close out lineups now that you have a THT. Uh, Vogel mentioned in the press conference yesterday that uh, THT is going to play a very important role. They asked him would he start. I don't think he will once LeBron comes back. I think as long as LeBron is out, he would continue to start. But who knows? Uh, I would like to see him start. I would like to see a lineup as AD as center. Uh, let LeBron, you know, slide over to the four. Let THT stay in that three spot. Uh, and then you could have maybe an Ellington uh, and a uh, Russell Westbrook. Because if you got Ellington out there with them, he's going to get a lot of easy looks. But at the same time, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with having Melo in the closing lineups, but not as a starter. I thought it was interesting to see him in as a starter because they went totally small. Uh, DeAndre Jordan didn't get any minutes at all, uh, which he hadn't been getting minutes the past couple games. And Dwight Howard has been coming in. So the past two games, that's what they did, started uh, – you know, they started AD at the center, so we'll see how that works out for them. Uh, he didn't have the best of car, Anthony Towns, on, on Friday. But uh, tonight, uh, they will be taking on the Chicago Bulls, who have been looking really nice this season, even though they suffered a loss uh, uh, to Golden State, because Golden State has been on a tear, even though they run came to an end against the Charlotte Hornets. You understand what I'm saying? So, like I said, no victory is given to anybody at any at any given time. Uh, and the Golden State Warriors, they've been looking unstoppable like the Golden State of old, even without Klay Thompson's Wiggins, even though numbers don't tell the full story because his numbers are pretty similar to what he's been putting up. But it's just the way he's performing in key moments of the game and not just garbage men. It's him actually contributing and bringing a lot to the, to the table for the Golden State Warriors this year. Uh, you know, I think it's been good for them. So we'll see how that works out uh, because the Golden State Warriors is going to be taking on the Brooklyn Nets tomorrow uh, with a rematch of uh, Steph Curry against Kevin Durant. And this time around, uh, Golden State is playing a lot better than what they were before. So it'll be very interesting to see because the Nets, although they haven't been playing top quality opponents, I would say, uh, but like I just said, every every victory is good in the NBA, so I don't take anything from them, but I'm just saying as good as they are, especially with the way Patty Mills has been performing, I think he hit nine threes on yesterday, uh, then you can see that uh, no, that the Nets are more than capable of coming out the East, like I keep saying, uh, even without Kyrie, because Kevin Durant, as long as he's playing at that level, but it's going to be a great game to see. I'm not sure if, uh, I think Golden State is actually going to Brooklyn 
if I'm not mistaken, because then they just go to Charlotte. So I think they're on the Eastern, yeah, on the Eastern Coast uh, road swing. So we'll see how that works out for them tomorrow night. I think that'll be a great game. And of course, uh, everybody is watching LeBron James to see, uh, to get a timetable on when uh, he may return. Uh, now they had, uh, Vogel did say he has returned to day-to-day -day activities. Uh, he hasn't went full practice mode on the court just yet, but he has been in day-to-day activities and just some on the court activity so with that being said they saying he is day-to-day -day, which is an upgrade so that sounds good that he is day-to-day -day. uh we knew he wouldn't play over the weekend but a lot of people are wondering uh will he go to the united center and play at chicago uh, because this is going to be a, a, a needed victory for the lakers but at the end of the day they still need to learn how to play without lebron james because when you insert lebron james it doesn't matter if he's gone or not it's going to make everybody else jobs easier although others would disagree because they think that he's so ball dominant that it takes away uh from others but at the end of the day what it does is get others easy shots and of course his leadership on both ends of the floor as far as his iq putting people in the right place on the court to be successful shit lebron james call out other people plays so don't forget that he call out the other team plays and lets you know where they supposed to be <laughs> but anyway uh He's day-to-day. -day. I would think more than likely he would uh, come back against Milwaukee on Wednesday night uh, in a marquee matchup. You know, he would love to probably come back uh, against Milwaukee, uh, against Giannis, just so they can test. The Lakers want to test to see where they are against the defending champ, Milwaukee Bucks. So that's another game I will be looking forward to tune into, whether LeBron James plays or not. But I'm hoping that he can go ahead and uh, suits up. But... You know, they don't want to push it, so they say. So I don't think that would be good for him to come back and re-injure himself. So it's just probably better for him to take it easy until he know he is at absolute full strength because it is still very early in the season. So with all that being said, uh, that's why they got Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis. And if you can't go out and get some victories in the NBA with the supporting cast that you have, now everybody keeps saying it's a super team. But when LeBron James not playing on them, they're not so super unless Anthony Davis is playing well, which he didn't play so well the other day. Probably him and Westbrook probably went out and got too crunk for Westbrook's birthday. And what y'all think about Westbrook uh, in the press conference when they got that ass whipped the other day by Minnesota and he's just out here, uh, Westbrook is just out here um, on his cell phone during the whole press conference. And a lot of people on Twitter lit him up, you know, like media pundits was just saying it, how disrespectful and rude it was. And to me, I think so too, unless it was an absolute emergency. You know what I'm saying? Show some professionalism, Russ. You know, don't be acting like a kid that just, you know, lost at the playground. So now you all mad and don't want to talk. You know, be a man, they paying you millions of dollars to do so. You think LeBron James didn't want to go out there and face the media at times? Especially how much scrutiny he has come under? But still, never once has wavered in the face of the media, regardless of what he stands, what he stands for. Russ, you got to do better than that. And of course, the Lakers had what 14 turnovers yesterday. Russell Westbrook had seven of those. You had half of those. So, still got to do better protecting the basketball. Uh, I think LeBron is going to be coming back here probably on Wednesday. I'm hoping. But if not, like I said, it is what it is. Uh, a lot of season left to go. I still don't really see anybody in the Western Conference who is going to beat the Lakers in the seven-game series. You can say Golden State or whatever, but at the end of the day, if the Lakers can get it right on the defensive end, which they haven't been doing, but I still think they have the pieces on the team that's more than capable. Just because you lost KCP and Caruso does not mean that you cannot go out and defend. And uh, if Frank Vogel, even though he doesn't have the best rotations as far as, uh, as his offensive mindset, what he does know is how to get the players to play great defense. So the Lakers, when they do play great defense throughout, they do it in spurts. And when they do play good defense, then they always go on runs. And of course, defense always leads to fast break points for them because when they can force turnovers, then they can get you out in the open court and don't even have to set up on the offensive uh, side of the ball. But you know, I kind of like what they was doing with THT, uh, with him coming back. I think that's going to be very, very key for them going forward. They did pay him the money over the over the summer. 
and they could have let him go. Uh, a lot of people tried to trade for him, even during that Lowry time, when they could have had Kyle Lowry from Shooter, uh, you know, last year, you know, at the deadline, and they chose to not give up THT because they see the future and the potential in THT, and so do I. And we know there was games last year when, when LeBron was out and Shooter was out, and THT had to start as the point guard, and he hit some real big shots, closing out some games. Uh, you know, he's a ball handler who can slash to the hole by him being able to slash and create for others and play off the dribble. That takes a lot of pressure off Russell Westbrook, especially if he's in the lineup with him, you know. So if if Westbrook and Beal can be successful, then you know THT and Westbrook can be successful. So you're talking about all kind of different ways you can stagger that lineup over the course of the game, even when LeBron James is there. So you tell me LeBron James is not on the court and you can still have a THT and a Westbrook in, you know, so, you know, the Lakers, like I said, they had the shooters that's capable. Kendrick Nunn is gonna be back. He's somebody that's capable who hadn't even had his shot. Of course, Trevor Ariza, even though he's long in the tooth, you know, he might get a shot here or there because it's a long season. So everybody got to be in that stay-ready mindset. You understand what I'm saying? So that's that's all I got for today, man. I'm going to get to the rest of my countdown. I'm still recovering. If you cannot tell, I lost my voice from getting too lit uh, at the Titans game. So as always, man, this your boy B. New, man. I'm saying right on to the real. Much love to the haters. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a clip from the Titans game right here at the end of the video, man. So y'all can see I was a little bit crunk. I had the session, uh, my whole section, a little bit too lit. But anyway, uh, as I was saying, right on to the rear and much love to these haters. I'm out.